Welcome to Meaningful Mornings. Please relax the body, enjoy the breath, quiet in the mind, in our community, one of our crew members, Ricky from Toronto, his nephew, who's four years old, his name is Shrien, he had a head injury yesterday and is in the ICU right now. Think about him. Offer your inner and outer strength to Shrien, his family, Ricky, his family. Salve Santu Niramayaha. May he, may all not ex experience any inner pain or outer pain. Yesterday, in our youth camp, with the theme of embracing discomfort, we experienced a workshop that relates to humanity. Specifically, that people need nature. Nature doesn't need people. And one of the facts that the presenters shared, a very startling fact, that North America makes up 3% of the world's population, a very small amount. Yet North Americans produce 35% of the world's trash, a very high percentage. And within this workshop, a term that was shared is NIMBY, <coughs> N-I-M-B-Y. And that stands for not in my backyard. The trash that we produce, we don't see it in our backyard, correct? We don't see it on our highways. We don't see it in our schools. We produce it and then we trash it to others. This fact is indicative of our negligence. We know we're producing the trash. We're just looking the other way. And so Meaningful Mornings is a culture to comprehensively guide us to live more carefully. If you produce trash, try to visualize that it's going into your backyard. Then you will produce less trash, correct? It's not being passed on to the next person. Living carefully in the world is called living intentionally. If you're ever confused about why you join at 7.45 a.m., if you don't know about the Bhagavad Gita and you don't know these Sanskrit terms, this is all being distilled to being intention. In Sanskrit, the word for intention is yoga. In the Bhagavad Gita, the portion that we're immersed in right now, has the theme of asi. Asi means I'm not an individuality. I am not divinity. Infinity, you are. Infinity are. Infinity. These further words like infinity you are or infinity are, those are irrelevant. 
infinity. This chapter, though, is tuning us into what is holding us back from feeling infinite. What is tying us down is the gunas, which in English means ropes. So many frameworks have been shared over the past three weeks. Another way to think of these gunas and how it ties down us and us to our ego, those who are filled with laziness have a strong sense of doership. Even not doing, they feel like, look at me, I'm not doing. A lot of our, our high school students are quite proud about how much they procrastinate. <laughs> Those who are filled with aggressiveness have a strong sense of deservership. Deservership. They want recognition, ovation, inclusion. Those who are filled with quietness have a strong sense of instrumentship. They're not the doer. They're not the deserver. They're an instrument of maya pati, or divinity. But all of these gunas are ropes that hold us back beyond instrumentship is being. It's not even beership or beingship. It is your nature, being. And so yesterday I had given you a visualization of Leela Swarupini. Can you show me what that visualization looks like with your hands or your drawings? Awesome, awesome, awesome. In this visualization of our Leela Swarupini, our mother, who's controlling us initially, but guiding us eventually, if you understand. You are in her hands. You will slow down when it comes to worrying. You will stop worrying. The doer worries a lot. The deserver worries less. The instrument worries the least. The beer, beer and worry, those don't go together. Understand, you are at most an instrument. How will you feel that? By being filled with quietness. In verse, <clears throat> verse 21, Prince Arjuna refers to Sri Krishna as Prabhu. Prabhu means the master. And he qualifies this in the next line by using the term Ativartate, the one who is past any holding back, past any conditioning. Prince Arjuna knows that Sri Krishna is Maya Bhati. And he wants to know what it feels like to be Sri Krishna in a visceral way. So he asks, Acharaha. Share with me about your lifestyle. Sattva is integration. If your lifestyle is like this, your vision will be too. If your vision is like this, your lifestyle will be too. The word acharya comes from achara. We define acharya as teacher, but really acharya is the one who leads themselves. And in doing so, they become a teacher. I have lots to read to you from Pujaswami Chinmayananda and Pujaswami Tejomayananda. Here's an insight from Pujaswami Chinmayananda. Philosophical ideas putrefy when they are not properly ventilated. 
Shri Krishna didn't end Bhagavad Gita with chapter two. He keeps ventilating this table of contents that is chapter two. Understanding alone can give rise to a true appreciation. And unless we appreciate an idea, we will never be able to live it in our day-to-day -day life. The Hindu philosophy is a way of life. And therefore, it is essentially to be lived. Don't talk about the gunas. Live these gunas in a changing way. If you're aggressive, live in a quiet way. Our culture, our community is not about scholarliness. It's about knowing this intensely. Prince Arjuna asks the question. Shri Krishna answers in verse 22. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Prakasham cha pravrittim cha Moham eva cha pandava Nadveshti sampravrittani Nanivrittani kangshati Joy. The divine Krishna is saying. I'm reading the translation to you because Sri Krishna is stating what we've already been oriented towards. Light, activity, and delusion. For us, that's sattva, raja, tama. When present, O Pandava, he hates not, nor longs for them when absent. What should Krishna sharing here? If this guna is present or not present, there is no liking or disliking towards the guna. And Sarjana's question was, describe to me atita, the one who is unconditional, Sri Krishna is responding with, if there's a guna, one is not impacted by this guna. In our youth camp, we're studying the book, Youth Keeping the Balance. The inspiration for this has been Puja Swami Tejo Mainanda, who interacts with so many youth. As I was studying this, Right in the introduction, Puja Swami Tejo Mayananda describes the gunas. I'm reading this out to you as another reflection point. There are three kinds of visions of life, and they depend upon the conditions of our minds. Number one, sattvika, pure vision, ability to see oneness of all. Two, Rajasika, impure, governed by likes and dislikes. Three, Tamasika, dull and dark, fanatic and angry. Only when your vision is one that serves society through your chosen path will there be an abiding success that blesses all of humanity, including yourself. You know about these gunas now. Sri Krishna has spoken about them for 20 verses. Prince Arjuna asks for clarification. Sri Krishna continues with this. The finality of what's being shared right now is the gunas belong to Maya. And if you are with Maya Pati, then Maya cannot touch you, which means the gunas do not touch you. Please relax the body again. Enjoy the breath again. Quiet in the mind again. And listen. Equanimity is the essence of perfection. And a human of knowledge is ever in perfect balance. They crave for nothing 
nor do they strive to acquire anything new. To have and not have, both are equal to them because they are beyond both living a life of inward peace, which is totally independent of all environments. Whether their mind and intellect are under the influence of rajas or tamas, even when they feel agitated or deluded, they are not in the least affected by them. And therefore, they hate them not it is only in the absence of self-knowledge that one hates them. No doubt, a person who is sattvic develops an attachment for its essential peace and serenity, its thrills and joys, and he hates when this inward joy is disturbed by agitations, rajas, or by dullness, tamas. Inhale, open your eyes and smile. Our training, our trajectory is to be gunatita, which is to be unconditioned. Practice this by whenever you're sensing the laziness, the aggressiveness, the quietness even, watch this. Observe this, and you will feel less conditioned. From inspiration to application, your application was to draw Leela Swarupini. Balivar students, can you hold up your drawings now? We can have an art contest. I like Deepas. I like Minas. I like everyone's. Everyone is a winner. <laughs> The point of this visual is to nurture the humility for you, the kite that thinks you are an individual, to come down to her feet so she can cut that string. She's the <laughs> doer, deserver instrument. Just be at her feet. Your application for this morning is we are in the final five verses of this chapter. On August 1st, we will commence chapter 15. Verses 22, 23, 24, and 25. Four verses. 22, 23, 24, 25. All describe Atita, one who is unconditioned. You please choose which of these verses do you need to practice the most. Today we explore 22. Three more are coming. Shanti, 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 be joy. 